Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Faye and today I am going to show you one of my favorite crafting projects I think I've ever done. This is this is up there. I am so excited about this one. And the best part about this is it's extremely inexpensive and easy to do. And it's personalized. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what are we talking about right now? We are talking about personalized doormats. Woohoo! Um, this is something I've, I'm so excited about this gift idea. Like really, it, this is something that I think the possibilities are endless on how you can personalize this. And the, I'm going to show you several examples and there's also a variation of doing like a really, really inexpensive version using a dollar store mat and then a higher end version using like a $20 mat that I got on Amazon. So, and that's still inexpensive if you think about it. Um, so yeah, let's do the inexpensive version first. I just got these mats at the Dollar Tree for a dollar each. They're indoor outdoor carpeting mats. Um, and I made a meow one here. Um, because I love cats. So, you know, I just did that. Um, I also did one here. This was my friend Leah's suggestion that I do this text on there. And it says, I hope you like Celine Dion. Um, because we love Celine Dion. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I did that one. I thought that was rather humorous. You can do like a, a humorous saying or phrase or anything like that um, on your doormat as well. Here's another example. It's just using an initial um, with some little ferns on either side. Um, and I thought that was really cute. The one that I really like how it turned out, I unfortunately can't show you an unobstructed version of it um, because it would give away my address. I had to actually cover it up um, to show it here, but I did my street address, like the number here at the top in between those same ferns that I used for the initial and then the name of the street down below. And, um, I think that that turned out so well. I, I really am happy with how that turned out. So that's kind of the inexpensive version and I'll show the DIY for that. And then the expensive version, um, I'm going to be giving to my mom actually for Christmas. And so um, she's gonna get a spoiler right here, but um, this is the more expensive version. And I love how this example turned out, you guys. So my mom has a, um, a newish, well, she's converting an old building um, into her she shed. And so I made this doormat for her. Um, I just think it's super cute. I used a cocoa coir doormat for this off of Amazon and it's backed in rubber and uh yeah it was it, I'm really pleased with how this turned out I think it looks pretty professional actually um yeah I mean these were all really easy to do the other thing I would like to point out about these Dollar Tree mats is that they roll up and they're very lightweight. So if this is something, you can roll it up right here and stick it in a box and it's pretty compact and you could very easily mail this to somebody. Um, or if you have like a larger box that you're sending to somebody and you need to fold it so it'll fit in the box, you could do that as well. They're lightweight, so it's not gonna cost you a whole lot to mail them. So I think that that's great, especially like this year right now when we're not gonna be seeing people and we need to mail gifts instead. So yeah, I, I could not be more thrilled about how these turned out. You're not limited to just using stencils either. If you're great at painting and you're a talented artist, by all means, go ahead and paint whatever you want on there. If you're great at doing freehand text, that as well. Me personally, I'm not great at either one of those things, so I stuck to the stencils. <laughs> this video is part of my DIY easy and inexpensive gift crafting series here on YouTube. And all of the gifts I think are things that people would actually want to receive. They're things that are easy to make and very budget friendly. You'll find affiliate links to the different items you'll need in the description box for this video. I'll be donating a portion of any proceeds from affiliate link sales to National Food Bank, Feeding America, as well as my local food bank, Second Harvest of Silicon Valley.
You only need a few things to do this tutorial. You just need a doormat, some acrylic paint in a contrasting color to the color of the doormat, and also a paintbrush and some stencils unless you want to freehand your design. Um, I got a pack of stencils at Michael's and I think it cost me, eh, I don't know, around $15 or so. And it had multiple different fonts in upper and lower case. So that gave me a good amount of versatility to the options that I had to use. For the Coco Quar mat, you will also need a Sharpie as well. I definitely recommend using a Sharpie for that. If you decide to try making your own doormat using this DIY, please comment below and tell me what you decided to do, what you put on your doormat. I would love to hear. With each mat that I did, I really tried to get the spacing correct on it. So I sort of laid out the stencils kind of roughly on the mat right before I started everything. And of course, sometimes there's going to be duplicate letters that you need to use, so it's not really possible to lay out all of the stencils all at once. Um, so I really tried to start in the corners of the mats. That way I could have enough space in between the words. And that strategy worked out pretty well for me. So you can see that on this mat, for example, I did um, I, you, and Dion first because those were the words that were in the corners. And then I went back and did hope. Um, that way I could kind of get the spacing equal between I and hope and hope and you for that top row of text. And this strategy worked out really well for me. Um, I basically just held down each letter as I used it so that it wouldn't move. And I really just got the acrylic paint on my brush and just kind of dabbed it on the stencil. I used a really small brush with sort of stiff bristles and really use that to work the paint into the fibers of the mat. If you duplicate a letter, you want to make sure that you dry off the stencil properly between the times that you use it. That way you don't get any paint that transfers from the prior impression that you made. Another thing that you want to do is you want to go back after you do the stenciling and darken up the letters because as you can see, when I go over with the stencil the first time around, I'm really just making sure that I get the shape, the overall shape of the letter. And it's important to go back later on and darken up the letters and also fill in the little gaps that the stencil leaves in the letters. And that really leads to a better imprint that you get 
on each letter and also just a, a darker impression overall. It really worked out nicely and I'm really happy with all how all of, all of the letters turned out. if there's any types of letters or characters or anything that are not included in the stencils you can go back later and freehand them like I had to freehand the accent over the E in Celine's name. mat was a little bit different in that I went over using a sharpie first so I did all of the stencils first but I went in and I kind of just dabbed with a black permanent marker sharpie first um, and that worked out pretty well for me and I found that it was kind of easier um, to do the paint on the coco Quar. with this I really had to kind of jab my brush in between the fibers a little bit in order to get the color to look a little bit more rich instead of just sitting on the top layer of the fibers. Um, this worked out pretty well. Um, I did have to go back at some point and redo a few of the first letters that I did because as I was going along I really got the hang of how to apply the paint and have it look good. So as you can see I went back and I did the W um, in a moment because I realized that it was a little bit too light and I didn't quite have my technique down when I was doing those first couple of letters. biggest problem I had with using the Coco Quar mat, which I was not anticipating, was that the fiber itself is really rough and scratchy, and I found that it irritated the skin on the bottom of my forearm as I was working on it. So I actually would recommend wearing a long sleeve shirt while you're doing this if you're working with a Coco Quar mat, um, preferably in a black or dark color because you might get some paint or some permanent marker ink on it. Um, but I did have an irritated lower arm section after I finished with this mat, and I definitely was not anticipating that. want to take your time and make sure that you're going over everything and also make sure that you leave enough time for the mat to dry after you're finished painting everything. It does take uh, several hours to overnight for everything to dry really well, um, especially if you're applying kind of a thicker layer of paint to it. Um, another note is that you will probably ruin your paintbrush when you were doing this. I found that after making all of these doormats, the bristles on my brush from really pressing in between the fibers and really getting that paint in there, the bristles were totally chewed up on the end. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.